Okay, this is a flow switch, which will connect. <coughs> it'll plug into the uh, into the mic the uh, micro mag, uh, not the micro mag controller, but the power supply controller for your water flow safety protection. This will eventually be mounted on the wall. Let's go back there and show you how it works. So you'll have one, one hose that will be coming from mm -hmm. the water chiller. That could be the, in, the input line. Mm -hmm. That's feeding water into the coils mm -hmm. and it comes out. Now where the out a connection is, that's going to connect to here. Because the switch has a one-way path. This is the input mm -hmm. and then this is the outlet. Okay. So the supply will bring you water into the coils. The um, return coming out of the coils will connect to the flow switch, and this could be mounted on the wall, see? And then this is the drain going out to the drain. So the output water goes through no. the flow switch. Okay, now they have a chiller here. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So how that will be connected? Same way. Get the water flow coming out of the chiller, the supply out of the chiller will go into one of these hoses, mm -hmm. either one, I don't care. Water flow through the coils has no direction path. It doesn't care whether you put it in here or put it mm -hmm. in here, but the switch does. So the water coming out, the return coming out of the coils, must go, <coughs> must connect to the flow switch on this line. So this would be the input. Water's coming out of the coils here, down out to the drain. Okay. That would be, and this would be mounted on the wall. Then your connector here, this little black one, Mm -hmm. That connects to the controller down here. Uh, let's see. Now we have a jumper in here temporarily. Mm -hmm. This is a temporary jumper, so I can make this run without water flow. Okay. Now what we could do is, uh, is I can give you one of these for the installation, but do not leave it with the customer because they will burn up the coils. They'll okay. run it without water. We could give you one of these as a spare, and that just push plugs in. Mm -hmm. and when you want to take it out, you push down on this little, okay. little plastic tab. And that'll pull it out. So with the water flow switch, that goes only one way. Yep, only one way. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's it's lined up and it has a, a key in there. Mm -hmm flat so it will only plug in one way for you. So as I say with the water flow switch this black connector will do the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the orange wires. That's going to plug in and that will be your water flow protection. We also have thermal switches, these two little thermal switches. Mm -hmm. They will be epoxied on the back of the coils once everything is installed. I think uh, Pratap has those films. Double check that he has the films from the other job. They, I think they filmed all of that, of how to install those two little connectors. They go right, they're installed right on the back of the coils. So the two heat heat, sw heat sw uh, sensors, these two heat sensors are in series with the water flow switch itself. So okay. either either one that fails, if you don't have water flow, it's going to fault, or if the temperature sensor gets too hot, it would uh, open the circuit and cause the power supply just to, to turn off. Okay, so we'll leave that on. So that that's another part of it. We can go through more of that at, at the end when we're maybe doing a partial disassembly of this mm -hmm. to explain that. So, uh, okay, now this will be uh, this will be inlet. This will be outlet. Mm -hmm. Okay, e either the one. Uh, yeah. anyone. The outlet will come. I yeah. mean, it it will come and uh, connect to the flow connect switch. it to the flow switch here. Right. Right. That's going to connect to the hose okay, okay. on the flow switch. Okay. And right. that will be out to the chiller. Right, right. and this okay. will be the return okay. out to the chillers. This is mm. the out, it's stamped out. Okay. This will be the outflow going over to your chiller. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no adjustments required, that that's uh, so I mean no, just so connections, nothing else. It's all pre adjusted. Okay. We, there's, we, we set them here for the correct flow. Okay. So, in here, the way this works, it's a very simple switch. If you have to clean it, mm -hmm. you can remove this plug mm -hmm. if there's any contamination. 
This is the little piston that moves back and forth. Okay. So when there's water flow, it moves the piston in mm -hmm. against the spring. Okay. And here's a little permanent magnet. And up here is a reed, reed relay switch, a little switch. Okay. So when you have water flow, it closes the switch and allows the power supply to turn on. And if you don't have water flow, the spring pushes this the piston back and turns it off. It's a very simple switch, easy to, easy to maintain and easy to clean. But if they have a water chiller, that's a good idea because it's more apt that you won't have any contamination from, mm -hmm. you know, old, old dirty pipes with cooling water. Okay. That should do it. is epoxy to mount the switches. There's a little two-part mix of With switches? These little uh, temperature okay, switches. Okay, okay. Yeah, they'll be stuck on the back of the coils. Okay. I'll show you where they go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's uh, get back to the furnace. And uh, we'll install the furnace package. Get this, uh, get this in position for you. It's generally good, you know, to have two people to, to do this. Right, get it lined up like that. Connector. Let me get a couple of screws. side, one on this side, just to keep it in position so it doesn't move while we're making the connections. Okay. All right, uh, once again we'll go to the back of the unit. some connections here. Okay. Alright, this uh, yeah, cable comes out and it's, it's labeled. It says to the controller. That'll come down here. And this is labeled heater. connect right on like this. That's from the gas chassis. This is to, to, connect to controller. Okay. That plugs in. This one, this is the heater cable coming from the furnace. And that'll plug right here. That's labeled furnace. It has mm -hmm. a different connector. That'll plug in like that. Okay. Now the vacuum port, which is right here, connects to the back of the furnace, just like that. 
Yeah, that just pushes on. That's it? Mm hmm And then you tighten it and it has a little has a little uh see so you tighten there's an O ring inside, so you push it on and then you tighten down this this device. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we just push that in place. And tighten it down. Okay. All right. Now, as far as oops, put that off. As far as hose, let's see. This will go to the extraction pump. This is the pressurized feed from the uh, helium bottle, which we'll bring over here later. That'll give us gas to the uh, to the system. And this goes up to the exhaust draft heater. This will go up to the top. And I'll bring that up to the top through here. Okay. That's the exhaust, right? Right. That'll go up to the top exhaust draft heater. Exhaust draft. Mm -hmm. That's coming from where? Right down here. Right here. It says uh, to exhaust draft assembly. Okay. That's this one. And that's going to go to the top of the unit. Hmm. Which off? Any particular reason why it's kept, why it's kept up? Um, I'm going to connect it on the top when I get okay. up there. Okay. I'm just pushed it up to get it in that in position. Okay. So that'll connect right up here. This will just connect right on here to the exhaust draft of he here. Exhaust draft is something. You just push it on like that. Mm -hmm. And there's just two little rubber O rings in here mm -hmm. that sit on top of the glassware. So you can just okay. position it like that. And then I rotate it over to the right so the hose is out of the way. And when you put your hull probe in, it won't bump into it. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much. Sets it up. So once the um, once the furnace is installed and the gas chassis is installed, you know, we'll connect up the rest and we'll be ready to make a run. When you're finished and the customer would like to go back to room temperature, all he has to do is remove the furnace. You do not have to take this out. We can leave this in position, which is good news. Just this furnace? Just the furnace. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can open up the air gap carefully and remove the furnace, put the furnace away safely in its box, and we could leave the gas chassis, uh, vacuum chassis, and in position. Just switch it off that Just switch it off and leave it in, leave it in position. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that should do it. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Now I'm only using this. This is a step-up transfer. You don't. You don't even worry about filming this. You won't get one of these. You don't need it because this is wired for 220. Okay. I. We don't have.